located on the Yaoundé Bafusam stretch, a sigh of relief for users who ply this road on a daily basis. Some hours to the traditional feast of Tabaski to be celebrated tomorrow Tuesday, most cities are gradually wearing the colors of a big feast. In this edition, get the polls in the markets, homes and mosques. Cameroon's boxer Maxim Mayengnong ranked fifth in the discipline on the world stage. He secured this position at the Olympics after beating his adversaries on several battles in the ring. And those are top stories. Good evening and thanks for joining us on this edition of the 7.30 News. I'm Gladys Tata. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. Children who survived the Nkole Song Road accident some 28 kilometers to Ayos are responding to treatment at the Yaoundé Central Hospital. Three others who were in critical conditions are said to be out of danger, except for their monitor whose leg has been amputated. Three ministers led by the Minister of State, Minister of Tourism, Public Health and Transport paid a visit to those in hospital to ensure they get proper medical attention. Constantine Baum has today's update. Their morals are better today than yesterday morning when I met these kids at the Saint Jean the Twenty Third Spiritual Center in Voli. I could see smiles on their faces this day, an indication that the trauma is fading out. They have all been brought to the Yaoundé Central Hospital for monitoring and to make sure no one is suffering with any unchecked injury. The three persons who were at the surgical emergency unit, who were told, are out of danger, but the monitor's leg was amputated. Their close relations in Yaoundé have been visiting, with them addressing their worries to the medical team assigned to the kids. Out of the 12 in the hospital, I saw only one child still in pain, but health officials inform us that all is in control and scans have been carried out. Senior officials of the Ministry of Tourism are in the hospital and will only leave when all the children must have been discharged. They are now the new guardians. The children were heading home to the east, Adamawan northern final regions after a successful holiday camp organized by the Ministry of Tourism and Leisure at Melong in the Mungu division of the littoral region. Unfortunately, while heading home, an accident occurred at Kolesong between Ayos and Akonolinga. Three persons died on the spot, a monitor and two children. The Minister of State, Minister for Tourism and his colleagues of Health and Transport comforted the children yesterday. The good news today, as these images tell you, is that the overall morale is high and better than yesterday. To other news, the port of Douala has acquired two dredging machines that will help the entity cut down on the costful dredging activity, which was carried out on the port by foreign companies. In 15 years, the country lost some 156 billion CFA francs to dredging on the port, but the in-house management of the dredging activity will henceforth bring in more money in, into state coffers. Beatrice Ngom completes that story. It is a step in the right direction for the autonomous port of Douala in Bonaberry. The in-house management of dredging, which for a long time was done by foreign companies, with the state pumping in some 10.5 billion per year and more than 156 billion in 15 years to have the port dredged. The nationalization of dredging will now cost an average of 76 billion francs CFA, with a projected saving of 103 billion francs for the state. Beyond the economic and financial impact, the nationalization of dredging also brings in other gains. In the past, we had less loading of vessels because of the non-dredging of the, the channel. Now, now the channel will be dredged every time. We are going to use the charging capacity of the vessels coming in the port de Douala at its maximum. Therefore, reducing the cost of transportation per tons of goods. 
other important development projects are also envisaged at the port. The management have engaged into a project that would consist in producing electricity in the port of Guala as an autonomous production of electricity. The other challenge is drinkable water and water for the firefighting system. That one too is a project for which a convention has been signed and which is supposed also to start very soon. The dredging management unit of the port of Douala intends to make Cameroon's waters safer, more accessible to bigger vessels and a reference in the coast of the Gulf of Guinea. And on to this lead story, during this long weekend of Tabaski, the National Road No. 4 Yaoundé Bafusam has not broken even with the tradition of heavy traffic. A novelty is the disappearance of potholes that had multiplied on the degraded highway. Users are thus reaping the fruits of the rehabilitation works executed on the Yaoundé Bafusam axis undertaken over the past years. Jo uh, jo Joyce Kimbi for you has more. Yaoundé Bafusam Highway, smooth, comfortable tar and enjoyable ride. The nightmarish, painful, long, tiring journeys experienced by drivers and passengers on the road is now spoken in past tense. I'm coming right away from Bamenda. There were a lot of potholes, really what they call dead traps. But the word that pothole is a small word, they were really dead traps. But they have not only filled the potholes, they have cleared the road and put in a new, uh, and co constructed the road newly. Very, very less tiring. It's not nice before, but now the road is nice. The rehabilitation project includes the erasing of potholes and tiring degraded portions. The construction of a crossover bridge at the Obala roundabout on Lot 1 that runs from Ebebda to Kalong is at 65% done. The company in charge says tiring and the graveling of sidewalks are near finishing. Lot 2 from Kalong to Tonga, the execution company boasts of completion of works and accompanying infrastructure in under three months. We are at over 95% finished. By November, all will be completed. With the panna beating of the Yaoundé Bafusam Highway's near completion, it may now gain back its comfort and lessen accident that had become recurrent. This development on the demonstration by some Cameroonians in the diaspora in front of the Intercontinental Hotel in Geneva, Switzerland, playing host to President Paul Bia and ensuring action taken by the Swiss government. It has emerged that 12 persons found guilty of the act have received prison sentences ranging from 40 days to nine months. Meanwhile, the population of the South region have joined voices across the country condemning acts by some Cameroonians in the diaspora who carried out acts of disturbances during the, during the stay of the head of state in Switzerland. Their reactions are grouped in this report by Clarence Aze of a South Regional Station. Many Ebolova city dwellers were in total shock and disbelief when they saw the horrible images of the protest of some members of the Cameroonian diaspora in Geneva over the weekend. From the common man on the street to religious, traditional and administrative authorities, they all expressed indignation. We cannot be indifferent to what is happening in Switzerland. Family issues should be solved at home. Those in the diaspora should know that they are expected to come and assist the President of the Republic in building the nation. There has been widespread condemnation across the South and many, irrespective of political leanings, likened the attack on the head of state to a hidden agenda targeting the unity of the country. Cameroon is a state of law and institutions. It is the duty and right of every citizen to respect them, no matter where they find themselves. The South, which overwhelmingly supported President Paul Beer in the last presidential election in 2018, remains mobilized and head high, ready to counter any initiative aimed at destabilizing Republican institutions. A clean-up exercise and the putting in place strategies to respect barrier measures against COVID-19 are part of preparatory activities at the Nkozwa Central Mosque ahead of tomorrow's celebration. And we are talking of celebrations that will take place tomorrow. This year's feast will mostly focus on praying for the return of peace in Cameroon and the respect of barrier measures against the coronavirus. Clarence Ngay visited the Nkozwa Mosque to get the level of preparedness ahead of tomorrow's feast of Tabaski. His report. 
At exactly 9 a.m., the Imam of the Kozwa Central Mosque, Mifiri Gusheme Suleiman, and the head of the Bamum community at Kozwa, His Majesty Pontu Nigni Alim, were very much present to hasten preparations ahead of tomorrow's feast. In and out of the mosque, total clean up and the reinforcement of all government barrier measures against COVID 19 were ensured. Muslim faithful from Kozwa, Akak, Yomtu, and Ebang, all on the outskirts of Yaoundé, will gather on this explanade tomorrow to pray and give thanks to Allah. It should be recorded that the Muslim feast honors the willingness of Ibrahim to sacrifice his son Ishmael as an act of obedience to Allah's command. Speaking to Imam Mifiri Suleiman, he told this reporter that this year's feast centers on praying for lasting peace in the country and the consistent respect of all government barrier measures against the COVID-19 pandemic. However, on the D-Day, Muslim faithful will rise early and attend public mosque and the prayer sessions, after which they will return home to sacrifice either a cow, sheep, goat or other livestock, which is the base of the celebration. And the purchase of foodstuffs has intensified at the Witian market here in Yaoundé prior to the Tabaski Feast slated this Tuesday. Sellers and buyers testify prices have moderately reduced to enable Muslims prepare for this religious feast. Romeo Kenyon was at the Witian market and now reports. The Witian market in Yaoundé, two subdivision jammed to capacity. Most buyers have come purchasing foodstuffs. Priority for Muslim buyers is on different spices like tomatoes and garlics, and the wheelbarrows assist in the transportation. I am here to buy the different spices that will be used at home to cook the mutton. For today, we remain in prayers so that tomorrow's feast moves on well. For many, tomorrow's sheep has been bought and pending slaughtering, but cow meat will also feature in meals and no one is exempted. Different price, this is uh, 500, this bucket uh, 3,000, this basket now 7,000, uh, and the D1 4,000. Uh, that filet, uh, 3, 000, at the same price. Given that there is a considerable price reduction in items, the sacrificial feast Tabaski promises to be a memorable fiesta in Muslim households in Yaoundé. How many of you know the Songol? It is a mind spot among the Mbakala games are usually played by fang betty men to enable them strengthen their intelligence and the ability to strategize. Played by men of all walks of life and tribes, the game promotes the spirit of fraternity, liberty, dialogue, and most especially, it also fosters national integration. Hanai Konde of CRTV Center takes us to the heart of Songo in the report that follows. Songo is one of the most popular mind sports of the Mankala game family, played specifically by men. Songo is uh, the principal game of uh, Ekan area, Cameroon, Guinea, Equatorial, Gabon. It's uh, a great game for, for men. Songo is played on a Mankala board known as the Mpek, with 14 holes known as Nda, meaning house. Each house contains five pebbles known as a season, making a total of 70 with 35 on each side with a big store for captured pebbles for two players. It is important to play uh, Songo because we have uh, the possibility to live together. The Songo masters are called Nti who embellish the game with funny orators of tales and fables. <laughs> plus an ordinary musician for entertainment. The Songo game sites are usually surrounded by bars and restaurants which provide traditional dishes, a perfect example of national integration, multiculturalism and living together.
Well, as we all know, tomorrow is uh, the Feast of the Tabaski. And a few hours to this feast, uh, women at the Briquetary neighborhood are taking turns to design uh, corners and hairdressing saloons to make themselves look beautiful. Our reporter Alice May visited some of these beauty spots and put together the following report. In this beauty corner at the Briquetary neighborhood, Zara has intensified her activities to satisfy her customers. She can receive above 20 women per day as compared to ordinary days. When customers come, I look at their hands and decide the type of design to apply. Women put henna for marriages, baptism, and for nyanga, especially during this period. Customers say henna makes them look more beautiful. I have put henna design to look more beautiful during the Feast of the Ram. At Amino Saloon, the case is different. We have too much customers, but it's just that the price, we have to base all the prices so that we can meet up with the customer demands. While waiting for the Feast of the Ram tomorrow, traders are doing their best to satisfy their customers. Well, uh, let's get uh, the pulse of preparations in some homes in the Centre Region with our Centre Regional Correspondent. The Feast of Tabaski to be commemorated tomorrow promises to be a hectic one in the Central Region. In our menu, we have fried rice, we have roasted ram, we have poulet deje, we have fried plantains, we have ndole, and we have some fruit slices, and we also have natural juices we've made. We're going to fry the goat meat, chicken, jollof rice, dodo. Apart from ensuring that food is made available, some mothers have bought dresses and ensured that other accompanying items are provided. As it is a feast of sacrifice, uh, we've already bought uh, the ram already. It was really expensive to get a ram now, especially the one that is really like white without dots. That's the one my husband wanted. And he had to buy a very big one, which was 110,000. Tomorrow, after the prayers, he will go and uh, slaughter it and bring it for the feasting. Muslim women in Yaoundé are now busy doing last-minute preparations to ensure that food is available for their kids and visitors. And on to this advertorial, La Régionale d'Epargne et Crédit SA, a microfinance institution, has entered the stock market in Cameroon with the placement of 61,634, 2,000 per share. The Director General of La Régionale, Jean-Claude Mba, rang the bell to start trading in Action Régionale share in a ceremony that took place in Douala at the headquarters of the Bourse des Valeurs Mobilières d'Afrique Centrale. Finance Minister Louis-Paul Motaze chaired the event attended by the President of the CEMAC Commission, representatives of BEAC, Kozumaf, a stock exchange company. Sally Ebenenyoki has more from CRTV Littoral in Douala. La Régionale des Pagnes et des Crédits SA is the first company in the financial sector to enter the stock market in Cameroon. The initial public offering for sale at the Central Africa Stock Exchange headquarters in Douala took place under the chairmanship of the Minister of Finance in the presence of the President of the CEMAC Commission alongside representatives of BEAC, Consumav and stock exchange companies. The ringing of the bell to start trading in Action Regional share is a concretization of the objectives of La Regional. Through this program, we receive a new reputation. We receive capital, yes, to realize our projects. Subscribers at La Regional stand to gain financially. Those who subscribe in La Regional in three months, the gain is 20%. After that, they will have also a part of dividend of La Régionale. Those who have attempted to invest in La Régionale appreciate this novelty. La Régionale has just done what we need to develop the country and to build for the first time a real capitalism in the, in the country. La Régionale's entry into the stock market is in respect of a decision taken by CEMAC heads of states, which the Cameroon government salutes. We came also to thank the, the people, the management of the La Régionale for what they are doing. It's a very great step, a very big step. Some 61,630 shares were placed at 42,000 francs per share and the total amount raised on the financial market 
is more than 2 billion, 5 million CFA francs to enable La Regional finance its development projects. The public offering for sale attracted some 2,400 new shareholders, including 20 legal entities and 2,300 individuals. Despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society. Over 300,000 doses of vaccines were administered to Cameroonians during the just-ended mass vaccination campaign against the coronavirus. Health experts say although turnout was impressive, there are still some diehards who are yet to get themselves vaccinated. Baldwin Sama and his guest, Dr. Tambasho Afizo of the National Immunization Campaign, are here with explanations. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Gladys Tata. The mass vaccination campaign against the coronavirus is over, and we are interested in knowing uh, more about uh, the figures that one should retain after this mass vaccination program by the National Immunization Program. We discussed that tonight with uh, Dr. Afizu Tambashu of the National Immunization Program. Good evening to you, Doctor. Good evening. After this mass vaccination campaign against uh, the, uh, the coronavirus, what are some of these key figures we should retain? Okay, following the vaccination campaign that just ended, we have already administered over 310,000 doses of the vaccine. And in the country right now, we have less than 150,000 doses remaining. So there is need now for us to request for more vaccine in order not to be out of stock. And those many vaccines are meaning, therefore, that they have to continue being administered to those who were not able to have themselves vaccinated. Yes, after the vaccination, the vaccination campaign, the vaccination continues in routine immunization. So on day-to-day -day basis, from Mondays to Fridays, vaccines are being offered in the health facilities. Thank you so much, Dr. Afizu Tambash of the National Immunization Program. Good news with uh, over 300,000 doses of vaccines administered to uh, different communities during this mass vaccination campaign. The take-home message from here is, uh, the mass, the, is that uh, vaccination continues uh, in the 10 different regions of uh, the country against uh, the coronavirus. Back to you, Gladys Tata. Thank you very much, uh, Baldwin Sama. And uh, we take you over to the far north region to talk on 156 ex-associates of the Boko Haram group who have joined the transit center of the National Committee for Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegration at the Meri in Jamari Division. They were officially welcomed by the representative of the National Coordinator, Dedonin Kolo Zanga, who provided them with sleeping material, drugs and small remnants to celebrate the Feast of Tabaski. Sylvester Temken completes the story from CRTV Marwa. The arrival of the 156S associates of the Boko Haram fighters at the disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration transit center in Meri summed the number to 574, among them 254 children, 134 women, and 186 men. We are taking the measure to help them as far as place, because you see there are too many of them here. They are abusing Meme, the multifunctional complex, which can acquire many of them. Meanwhile, with women's smiles, the S fighters also received what the representative of the national coordinator described as Tabaski nutritional and sanitation kits. It was also an occasion to award prizes to some meritorious peoples of the DDRO center. The ceremony ended with a cordial exchange between the S fighters and authorities, where the regional coordinator of the disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration for the far north, Omar Bishaya, called for frank collaboration and unity. ICT experts say uh, young girls have the same capacity and talents like their male counterparts, especially when it has to do with innovative functions of the computer. He made the statement at the end of a workshop organized by the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, aimed at training thousands of young African girls in the use of ICTs for development. Kinge Angela Patti has more from CRTV Southwest in Boya. 
after one week of training, these young girls from diverse backgrounds came up with innovative projects on various computer development skills such as the production of a locally made smart mailbox mechanism directly connected to the SMS system of a mobile phone. Other projects included the creation of a smart dustbin, a website creation on Cameroon in miniature, a gaming brain box puzzle platform, and animation presentations on coronavirus amongst others. To empower young girls with advanced IT skills, actually uh, precisely in the area of coding for development, empowering them with those soft skills that they can be able to build programs that can help them, you know, in terms of developing themselves in various areas. In line with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, these young girls applauded this initiative. I've enhanced what I know about computer. I've learned website building. I've learned how to make a website. I've also briefly learned how to make games in the website domain. The workshop, which lasted eight days, took place on the campus of the Advanced School of Post and Telecommunications in Boya. And in sports, we take you to the Olympic Village in Tokyo, Japan, to discover one of the athletes representing Cameroon, Maxim Yednong Jeo, boxer in over 91 kilogram category, has demonstrated his skills in the ring with several victories, leading him to the Olympics and fifth spot in the discipline on the world stage. Maxim Yednong, a story of strength found in weaknesses and a flag to hold high, in a report signed GT Clarice C. When Maxim Yengnong first knocked on a boxing gym door, it was to protect his family from violent people he encountered in the streets. Passion then stepped in, seeing him through several victories, including his 4-1 win against Algerian Shuap Bouloudinas, which grabbed him a ticket for Tokyo. I'm working on my speed and technique. We are trying to be perfect. I have challenged myself. My aim at the Olympics is to grab a medal. In Tokyo since July 5, 17 training sessions and over 14 days later, his coach is hopeful that a gold medal may come from this heavyweight. We are giving our boxers no moment of respite for now. We want them to be at top performance. They are steadily improving and will soon be at their best levels. We just hope the draws favor us and if that's the case, you will be pleasantly surprised. Maxim Yang Nong Jeyu, Cameroon's super heavyweight, is conscious. Tokyo is a huge stage, and his hope is to grab gold for Cameroon, a true symbol of his victory in the ring of life. Well, it is here we draw the curtains on this edition. Thanks for watching. In another 30. I urge you once again to put on your face masks to wash your hands regularly and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus.